You're probably wondering why I haven't called. There's so little time when I'm truly alone with privacy to exclaim deeper meaning. Probably asleep, dreaming uncertain vision as I address the afternoon watching angel sun transit sky in sloping cascade. Oblivion blue, puffy white clouds like island morsels shriveled upon a wide ocean expanse when viewing the earth if standing upon the moon. The trees are empty skeletons of their former selves, dreaming of spring, their dormant pose held for warmer days. It's December 26th and unusually warm outside. Feels like the mid-60s. The Creator's present gift to me as all I wished for was warm sunshine. Like the trees, I'm in repose, romancing the merit of former glory. Days when I woke eager for adventure, triumphant youth, lost and wayward, clinging to freedom no matter the cost, acting ten foot tall and bulletproof, immortal to repercussion or consequence, how far removed I am from the person I was before. Certainly there are regrets, but no matter, I would always rather be found and in my wheelchair than lost and walking around. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is FallenAngels.tv. It's a Saturday Sabbath broadcast as we continue the seventh part of the series on the loss of immortality and the bright nature and exile and banishment of our ancestors, paternal ancestors, Adam and Eve, in this case, Adam and Ua. Um, and how it is that they ended up being relocated here upon the planet and under the authority of the Nakash, the winged snake, the feathered serpent, guardian of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and how also the rebel angels ended up being here banished to this dark earth and at a time prior to the fall from grace of our ancestral mother and father. And so we're going to pick up on the series. Um, I have reached chapter 28 and I think we have probably a fifth of the text yet to go. And today I will be extra vigilant to not allow the button, as far as the mute button, to get pressed so that we can continue and attempt to try to get this this project done. And hopefully you'll have all of the information and you'll be able to glean the what I think this text would be very relevant um, as far as what we are going through as world and experiencing as people because um, it reminds us of a time as Christ says remember from whence thou art fallen and it helps us to understand that we are not just, you know, that this isn't our world, but that we're visitors here in this plane of experience and that the the dual nature, the dual aspect of what we are experiencing here from 
pain to pleasure, uh, and that the good and evil, that all of this has a definite end, and that um, as the promise of the gospel relates to us, that there will be a time when evil will be allowed continuance no more and we will no longer have to deal with the presence of the fallen angels, the oppression and the temptation to continue in sin and um and being caught up in the carnal aspects of this world. And so We'll go ahead and get into the text because I do want to try to limit this to two more shows. And I'll share commentary as we go through and uh, different parts which are of great interest because there are a lot of truly, truly intriguing aspects to this text. And Again, another one of the things that I think is um, very interesting is that this text being Thracian precedes the pagan cultures and civilizations and knowledge base of the Sumerians who spoke of the Anunnaki. And in fact, that a lot of their wisdom texts were those that were written by the Anunnaki or the fallen angels as we know them, the powers, the principalities, these rulers of darkness, the wickedness in high places, the you know, the authorities, the temporary those that have temporary reign over this world and how they have utilized um their technology and also their their knowledge of the mysteries of the heavens, the things of which they brought with them when they were cast out and have utilized to try to enslave the pre-Adamic humans that were here prior to the modern creation of what is termed even in their text as being the civilized man. And that this is another one of the, um, I think, the most important parts of what is the strong delusion now that is um, sweeping so many into the belief systems that the Anunnaki, the fallen angels, the rebel angels, uh, that they were the creators of humanity and how many believe that the reason we've never found this so-called missing link, this ancestral link between ape and man is because they were the ones that had jumped the gun on evolution. And unless you understand the differences between what is cited in Genesis as the two creations, one being done by the Elohim, the other by Yahweh Elohim, and that um, that there is a significant difference between these two eras, epochs of earth history, that of pre-Adamic and, you know, modern humanity, um, then you could easily get swayed and easily get caught up in the whole belief that indeed the rebel angels are the creators of mankind. And also to the ancient aliens, the postulation that is being put forth by them that they are not only our creators, but our benefactors 
and that they are the ones that are coming to save us from ourselves. And so, and a lot of people that believe this, um, they give full credence to and prioritize uh, those teachings which verify this as premise, uh, such as not only the, well, most of the pagan belief systems and the mythologies that are surrounding them um, that in every way assert this, and they deny the divinely inspired texts of the gospel as far as the Old and the New Testament, and the extra-biblical, extra-canonical texts, which are also extra detail as to the foundation of truth uh, contained within the canon. And so that's uh, one of the intriguing things as far as this being a, a, a text which is 2,000 years older than the Sumerian and also um, the Egyptian and the mythologies and the belief systems. Uh, both of them as they are largely pagan and idolatrous and that the cultures they worship the fallen angels, the rebel angels as their pantheon of gods. And so continuing and I every once in a while I will be checking just to make sure that you know I didn't somehow slip into a mute position because uh, I certainly don't want there to be any idle time. So, continuing with chapter 58. But the evil Satan was envious because God comforted Adam and Ua. He forestalled them and went to the cave where he took the two figs and buried them outside to the east of the cave so that Adam and Ua wouldn't find them and this way, Satan would manage to kill them finally. But because of God's mercy, God spoiled Satan's plan. And immediately after the two figs were buried under the ground, he made two fruitful trees out of these buried figs, which shaded the cave. And later Satan got angry and pitifully said to himself, It would be better if I had left the figs of its place because now they have become two fruitful trees from which Adam will eat during all the days of his life and I was planning when I buried the figs to hide them forever and finally to destroy Adam and Ua of course this would be through starvation but but God was smarter than me and defeated my plan and he didn't want this sacred fruit to die and so God spoiled my intentions and ruined my plan which I plotted against his servants. Afterwards, Satan went away ashamed because he couldn't realize his plan to their end. When Adam and Ua came closer to the cave, they saw the two fig trees covered with fruit which also shadowed the cave. And Adam said to Ua, I believe we missed the way and got lost. When did these trees grow up here? It seemed that our opponent wants us to get lost. Do you think that there is another cave on earth besides this cave? After all, Ua, let's go to this cave and let's see if we will find the two figs. Because this is our cave in which we were before. But if we don't find inside the two figs, then this cave cannot be ours. Adam and Ua went inside the cave and sought the figs in all four corners, but they couldn't find them. And Adam started to cry and said to Ua, Did we come to another cave, Ua? It seems that these two figs are from the figs which were inside the cave, uh, these two fig trees. 
are from the figs which were inside the cave. But Ua said, I don't know. And then Adam stood upright and prayed to God and said, O oh God, you ordered us to go back to the cave to take the two figs and to go back to and bring them to you. But we didn't find them. O oh God, is it you who took the figs and planted these two trees? Did we get lost on the earth or did the opponent delude us? And if this is true, God, then reveal to us the secrecy of these two trees and the two figs. And then God's words came God's word came to Adam and said to him Adam when I sent you to bring the figs Satan came to the cave before you he took the figs and buried them outside to the east of the cave with the intention to destroy them so he did not plant them with good intention it is not only because of him that these trees have grown up instantly, but because I was merciful in order the figs to grow, and they became two big trees, so they might give you shadow with their branches when you want to relax, and also to show you my power and my marvelous deeds, but also to show you Satan's dirty work and evil intentions. Because from the time when you left the Garden of Eden, he didn't stop with his evil deeds, not even for one day. But I didn't allow him to have power over you. And God said, from now on, Adam, be glad for the trees you and Ua And do relax under them when you get tired, but don't eat its fruit, and don't come near it. God said this in order to test Adam and to see if Adam would break again God's commandment. But Adam cried and said, Oh God, are you going to kill us again, or will you again drive us away from your face and cut off our lives from this earth? Oh God... I beg you, if you know there is death in these trees or something of another evil like the first time, then uproot them from this place and wither them up and leave us to die from the heat, thirst, and hunger. Because we know that you are powerful and we know about your marvelous deeds, God, which you are great. And we know that through your will and power, you could make one thing from another, because you, your mighty power can make the rocks become trees and the trees to become rocks. Chapter 59 Then God looked at Adam and he saw his strong mind and his endurance of hunger, thirst, and heat. And so God transformed the two figs into two figs like they were before. And he said to Adam, Take each of you the one fig. And Adam and Ua did what God told them. And God said to them, Go to the cave and eat up the figs so you may satisfy your hunger and not die. Adam and Ua went to the cave at around the time when the sun was about to descend. They stood and prayed in the hour of sundown. And after Adam and Ua prayed, they sat down to eat the figs, but they didn't know how to eat them because they didn't yet get used to the earthen food. They thought that if they ate, their stomachs would grow heavier and that their bodies would be bigger and make them like the earthen food. But while they sat down like this, not daring to eat, God pitied them, and he said his angel... And so Adam and Ua might die because of their hunger and their thirst. And the angel said to them, God is saying that you don't have the strength to fast until death. And that's why you must eat and make your bodies stronger. Because your bodies are now like those of the animals. And you cannot live without 
food and drink. Then Adam and Ua took the figs and started to eat them, but God had put in them a mixture like a fragrance of bread, and the color of the figs was blood-like. The angel left Adam and Ua, and they ate till they were satisfied. The rest they didn't eat, so they put it aside. But because of God's will, the figs became whole again, like they were before, and he blessed them. Afterwards, Adam and Ua started to pray with joyful hearts and renewed strength. They praised God, and they were quite glad the whole night, and this was at the end of the 83rd day. All right, I'm going to make a comment here. You see how in this particular text, over and over, we see the reference to Adam and Eve, or Adam and Ua, how their bodies were transformed from that of what is described as a bright nature, um, meaning that they were immortal, and that if they had just eaten from the tree of life and never had partaken of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they would n never have succumb to death, which, you know, it, it did say in the Genesis text and in this particular text that when they ate or if they ate or touched the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, that they would die. And that, you know, Satan deceived them, tempted them and said, oh, surely you will not die. Uh, but that God meant that not immediately that they wouldn't die um, like if it, was, if it was some kind of poison to, and that touching it would um, inject them with venom and they would die immediately. What he meant was that being transformed into flesh and that having lost their immortal bright nature, their angelic way of being, that having been transformed into flesh, they would eventually succumb to death, and that after being banished here and living out their lifetime and growing old, that eventually they would succumb to disease and that they would die and that their bodies, their flesh bodies, would revert back to the dust of the ground of which their flesh bodies were made, and that their immortal, um, bright, nature, their spiritual being, that aspect of them which is um, immortal, and even within us, the spirit part of us that is within us, that is our connecting link to the creator, that part of us is the breath of life that was um, given, blown into Adam and Eve, and that united our our previous spiritual embodiment with that of our flesh form. And that now we are, you know, we are dual natured in that we are um, that part of us, that immortal aspect of ourselves, that that is the spirit which indwells the flesh and that is contained within uh, the flesh body, and that that is the part of us that departs when we die and we succumb to to death, and that this is the part of us that when our spirit enters into the bodies um, that are, you know, the the merge of the egg and the sperm, and then the replication the division of the cells into what eventually becomes our 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 flesh vehicle that when our spirit enters into this this body that's what gives it warmth that's what um gives our flesh being warmth and our body 
the the breath that's when the, you know the breathing begins our consciousness has entered and merged with this flesh which would be a vehicle for our spirit all right and so we see how they had not they you know didn't even know how to eat and that they did not even at this particular time have digestive systems in order to um to ch- change to transform the figs into energy for their flesh bodies and in the previous parts of the text they didn't even know how to walk um they had never taken steps i'm guessing that they were able to float uh, you know and and that they were able to travel with the the intention of their will much like we do in dreaming um and that they had not they were not used to darkness they had not experienced heat or you know the burning feeling sensation of uh the sun's rays the heat from the sun's rays um they had never drank water they had never you know all these things were first for them because prior they had never been in flesh form all right chapter 60 and if you do have a question i will try to answer uh we do have a question here matthew asked do you think that if Lucifer is active on the planet, then the fallen angels mentioned in the book of Enoch are still active on the planet. And these are the names of the leaders, uh, Semyaza, uh, all the different names that are mentioned in um, in the book of Enoch. Okay, I'm going to answer this question real quick. Uh, Yes, I do believe that the fallen angels, the rebel angels, are active on the planet. But that if you read the book of Jasher, I believe it's the book of Jasher or the book of Jubilees, that after the flood of Noah's day, when um, the giants, 409,000 giants were wiped out, and that they were drowned in the flood, and that most all things uh all that all the creatures of the earth that they were they were also drowned in the flood, and that all of this was done in order to give Noah, who was pure in his generations as well as his uh the eight members of his family, a chance to regain a foothold in a world that had become so corrupt and so polluted that they were uh, they would not have made it the the giants the men of renown the fallen angels um they would have would have been murdered outright and so the judgment of the flood was brought upon all of these beings in order to give Noah and his family a chance to end the seed of the woman to regain a foothold so that they would not be wiped out by the evil that was already here. And after the flood, that Noah prayed for his sons and he asked the Most High to bind up um, the forces of Mastema is what it says in the in the text. And Mastema is just another name for Satan. But that Satan had made an appeal to Yahweh Elohim, to the Most High God, and asked him to spare at least one-tenth of his demonic forces. One-tenth of the angels that had joined him in rebellion. 
Now, as far as the watchers, the 200 watchers that are mentioned in the book of Enoch and that fell during the time of Yared, this was a second incursion that Satan and the rebel angels, they were already cast out and they were already banished here to the earth and they were already um, creating megalithic cities and structures and they had already attempted to create a slave race of the pre-Adamic human that was here. And so when the watchers fell, they were placed into bodies of flesh and they were able to then mate with the daughters of Cain and to propagate um, and to actually, you know, have children from such propagation and the men of renown were born from them. It says in the chapter, the most detailed chapter in, uh, that you can find on this particular this particular event, the book of the Kebra Nagas, which is the glory of kings. It's an Ethiopic text, uh, chapter 100, concerning the fall of the angels. In there, it talks about the tra their transformation and their being placed into flesh form, and that that's the reason why they were able to propagate with the daughters of Cain and that the children that were born from them, uh, that they weren't, um, not, not all of them were born naturally, but that because of their giant size and because they were hybrid beings, they split open the bellies of their mothers. I'll, I'll post a link to this text in the chat room so you can read it for yourself but that the the fall of the watchers was a second incursion of angels being banished from the heavens and having lost their first estate they joined the rebel angels that were already here alright let me post this link and then I'll go ahead and get back into the text. But anyways, when you read this, you'll understand what I'm talking about. And so nine-tenths of the, the forces of evil, the fallen angels, that were here after the flood of Noah's day, they were bound up. And they were imprisoned in the place that the book of Enoch refers to as Dudael. Um, and that only one-tenth of the forces of darkness, the powers, the principalities, uh, the wickedness in high places... Uh, were allowed to continue roaming here upon the planet and to continue in their evil escapades along with their leader, Satan. All right, continuing. Continuing with chapter 16. At sunrise, Adam and Ua started their morning praying as usual. And after that, they came out from the cave. But they didn't feel good because of the food they ate, and they were not yet used to it. Adam and Ua walked around the cave and said to each other, What happened to us because of this food? And why do we feel pain? Pity us, we are going to die. It would be better to die than to eat. To preserve our bodies pure instead of violating our bodies with food and Adam said to Ua in the garden of Eden we didn't feel such harm either did we eat there such bad food do you think Ua that God will destroy us through the food that is inside us do you think our intestines will come out 
Or do you think that God wants us first to suffer and later kill us through this pain before he will fulfill his promise to us? And Adam begged God and said, Oh God, don't let us to die because of the food which we ate. Oh God, don't punish us, but have mercy. And don't abandon us till the promised day. All right, let me make one other comment here. Um, We know that the manna, the manna from heaven, that this was considered like ambrosia. It was considered angel's food. And that um, there are references to angels being able to eat, but that their food is different. And that even like uh, the angels that went and met with Abraham and with Lot, that they were also able to eat. And so um, I, I think that their eating is a lot different in that they don't need the physical bodies in order to um, transform and to change the energy of what they eat into something that their bodies can use as fuel. Um, But that it seems that the angels in heaven, that they partake of food. Um, And whether, you know, I, I know it's not because they need energy to fuel their, um, their bodies, their immortal, angelic, and, you know, bright-natured bodies, but perhaps it's just for the sake of being able to to eat and to taste and to take pleasure and joy um, food. And that the, you know, the manna that the Israelites, the Hebrews, uh, partook of while they were in the 40 years in the wilderness that it was supposed to take taste like honey in some somewhat so uh who knows you know who knows but i do believe that you know the angels um also partake of flavors and they t- get they get enjoyment from eating and, and drinking, you know, there's the four rivers, the the river of wine, the river of uh, milk, um, the par- you know, the four rivers of paradise, and that they are all different too, and so um, maybe it's just for flavor that it's not necessary, you know, for them to to eat in order to transform it into something that their bodies can use but that um that they are eating just for the sake of enjoyment perhaps you know this is still speculation all right continuing then god looked at adam and ooh and he made their bodies fit for eating food as it is today so they might not die so this is you know their bodies were uh, they were given digestive systems in order to partake of earthly food. After that, Adam and Ua returned to their caves, sad and crying, because now their bodies had changed and were not like before in the Garden of Eden. And from now on, Adam and Ua knew that they were changed beings. They knew that their hope to go back to the Garden of Eden was in vain and had faded away and they knew that they will not be able to go inside the garden. Because their bodies had now odd functions and the body that needs earth and food and drink in order to survive cannot exist in the Garden of Eden or paradise. Because um, as I cover in the fourth book of my fourth book Lucifer Father of Cain uh, there's a whole chapter on the difference between paradise and the Garden of Eden um, and that the Garden of Eden I uh, assert 
is here upon the earth, the wilderness of the earth, uh, the cave of treasures where they were banished to, and that paradise is where they were exiled from. And that paradise is found at the third heaven. And that this is also where there's the gulf um, between the place of the righteous and the place of the wicked. Um, that one is called Abraham's bosom. There's other aspects, Tartarus, where the giants and the rebel angels are are held. And that um, that there's a lake between them, the Arturusian Lake, and that this is the lake which we will be baptized in when we are returned to our first estate. And that the tree of life is there, and that our, you know our new names going to be written in white stone, and that we will be given st- this stone uh, by the Most High, by y- Yahushua as the Son, uh, and that we will be given new names. And that all of this is described in the Book of Revelation as well. And for if you want to know more, you can refer to two books, The Vision of Paul, which gives a great detailed description of all this as well, and also The Gospel of Nicodemus, where, um, where during the first resurrection when Christ died on the cross, and the three days that he was away from his body, he went down into hell, freed Adam and all of the other patriarchs, took him to Michael um, in, at the third heaven and delivered him to them, to Michael, and that Michael baptized them in, a, in the Arturusian lake and that they were then allowed to go into the New Jerusalem, the city of God. All of that is detailed there as well. All right. Because their bodies had now odd functions in the body that needs earth and food and drink in order to survive cannot exist in the Garden of Eden. And Adam said to her, uh, See, now our hope has been cut off, as our faith to go inside the garden is cut off. We don't belong any longer to the inhabitants of the Garden of Eden, but from now on we are earthly and from soil and earthly habitants. We will not go back to the Garden of Eden, which I'm referring to as paradise, until the day in which God promised to save us and to lead us back to it accordingly, according to his promise to us. Now again, this is that same promise that is cited in the Gospel of Nicodemus, when the when Adam tells Seth to tell the patriarchs that are down in Abraham's bosom with him, that when he was cast out of paradise, that um, that God had told him that his son would incarnate into flesh, and that when he would be crucified on the cross, he would come down into Sheol and free them. And that was the fulfillment. The Gospel of Nicodemus is the fulfillment of the promise that is asserted here in this particular text, uh, the book of Adam and Uah. After that, Adam and Uah prayed to God to be merciful, and their minds calmed down. Their hearts were crushed and their desire chilled, and they were like strangers on the earth. During the same night, Adam and Uah spent their time in the cave where they slept with difficulty because of the food that they had eaten. Chapter 61 When tomorrow came, Adam and Uah ate food. They prayed in the cave, and Adam said to Uah, See, we begged God for food, and he gave it to us. Now let's beg him for drink. And so Adam and Uah went to the shore of the water stream, which is southern side bordered the Garden of Eden, in which Adam and Uah had thrown themselves before in order to die. 
They stood there at the shore and prayed and begged God to tell them to drink from the water. And then God's word came to Adam and said to him, Adam, your body is now carnal and it needs to drink water. Go and drink, you and Ua. And after that, thank and praise God. And so Adam and Ua drank from the water stream till their bodies got fresh. Um, after they drank, they praised God and returned to their cave as usual. This happened at the end of the 83rd day. And on the 84th day, Adam and Ua took the two figs and hung them in the cave, together with its leaves as a sign for God's blessing. And they kept them there till they would get, till they had descendants, so they might see the marvelous things that God had made for them. And after that, Adam and Ua again stood outside the cave and begged God to show them food so they might satisfy their bodies. And God's word came and said, Adam, go to the western part of the cave where you will find black soil, and there you will find food. Adam obeyed God's word. He took Ua, and they went down to the land with the black color. And they found their wheat, mature, eared corn, and they found figs as well. Adam was glad and called this place God's wheat field. And then God's word came again to Adam and said to him, Take this wheat and make bread of it which, with which you can feed your bodies. And God gave Adam knowledge to his heart and mind so he would know what to do with the wheat till it would result in bread. And so God revealed to Adam the mystery of bread. Adam did what God told him till he got very tired and fainted. After that, Adam went back to the cave. He was glad because of what he had learned about the wheat and how to make bread for using it as food. Chapter 62 And when Adam and Ua went down to the land with the black mud and after they came close to the wheat, which God showed them, they saw that it was mature for harvesting, but they didn't have a sickle with which they could reap reap it. That's why they made an effort to pull up the wheat till it ended. After that, they collected the harvest into a heap. They got tired of the heat and the thirst, and so they went to the tree to relax, which gave a shadow, and a light wind made them fall asleep. But Satan saw what Adam and Ua had done, and so he gathered his army and said to it, God showed Adam and Ua everything about the wheat and how to feed and strengthen their bodies. And see, since they collected the harvest into a big heap and fell asleep because of hard work, then let's go and kindle this heap of wheat and burn it up, and let's take their container with water and empty it so they may not find anything to drink and this way we will kill them through hunger and thirst later after Adam and Ua will wake up and will want to go back to their cave we will meet them on their way and we will mislead them aside so they may die of hunger and thirst then maybe they will reject God he will destroy them for that, and this way we can get rid of them. And then Satan and his army kindled the wheat and burned it up. Adam and Ua woke up because of the heat of the fire. They saw their wheat burning, and they saw that their container with water, which was beside them, was empty. And so they started to cry and returned to their cave. But when Adam and Ua climbed up from the foot of the mountain where they were where they were, Satan and his angels met them disguised as angels 
and glorified God. And Satan said to Adam, Adam, why are you suffering of hunger and thirst? It looks as Satan burned down the wheat. Adam replied, yes. And Satan said again to Adam, come with us. We are God's angels. God sent us to you to show you another field with wheat, which is better than this one. And close to that field there is a well with good water and a lot of trees, where you will live and work nearby and where you will succeed better. And so Adam thought that the angel was real, a real angel from God, and so he came back together with them. And then Satan started to lead away Adam and Ua from the path during eight days till they fell down to the ground and were like dead because of hunger and thirst and tiredness. And then Satan, together with his army, ran away and abandoned Adam and Ua. Chapter 63. And then God looked at Adam and Ua, and he saw what came upon them when Satan deceived them and caused them their lives. Because of that, God sent his word, and the word brought Adam and Ua back to life. And when Adam and Ua were made alive, Adam said, O oh God, you burned and took away from us the wheat which you gave to us. And you emptied our container with water, and you sent your angels who deceived us and misled us aside from the road. Are you going to kill us? If this is your will, God, then take our souls and don't punish us anymore. God said to Adam, It was not me who burned down the wheat, and I did not empty the water and then I did not send angels to lead you astray. But Satan, your master, did that, to whom you submitted and turned your back to my commandment. It was him who led you away from the road, and all his promises which he gave you were only willingness Williness and deception and a lie. Now, Adam, you will recognize my kindness towards you. And God said to his angels to take Adam and Ua back to the field of wheat after it was restored to its previous estate and with the container filled again with water. There in the field, Adam and Ua saw a tree on which they found a firmament, manna, and they were amazed of God's power. The angels told them to eat from the manna when they get hungry. And God gave Satan a scolding, and he cursed him so he might not come again and destroy the wheat field. Afterwards, Adam and Ua took the wheat, and made an offering to God by taking it to the mountain where Adam and Ua made their first blood offering. And Adam and Ua offered again a gift to the altar with which they had set up in the beginning. They started to pray and said, O oh God, when we were in the Garden of Eden, paradise, our praising went up to you and our innocence rose up to you like the incense. And now, God, accept this offering from us and don't send us away without your mercy. And God said to Adam, Since you gave me this offering, I will make my body when I come down to earth to save you, and I will make this offering customary at the altar for forgiveness and mercy to those who will duly participate. All right, so you can see how this is another one of these passages which give a 
which are connected to Christ becoming the Passover lamb and how his allowing himself to be murdered under the conspiracy of the Pharisees um, and the crucifixion of the cross that he would take on the sins of humanity and give us a chance for redemption which through him as the way and the truth and the light would give us a chance to accept the grace of salvation of which his sacrifice for us gave us opportunity for. All right. Uh, you're welcome. Check out that. Um, you'll definitely want to check out that. That Kevin Nagas. All right, continuing. We might even be able to finish this today. Hopefully. And God sent a bright fire to Adam and Ua's offering and filled it with brightness and blessing. And the Holy Spirit descended over it. After that, God ordered an angel to take a pair of pinchers for fire like a spoon and to take with it the offering and to give it to Adam and Ua. And the angel did what God ordered. And Adam and Ua's souls lightened, and their hearts were filled with joy and exultation. And they praised God. And God said, May this become a custom unto you. When unhappiness and grief will come upon you, but your liberation and return to paradise will not come now. Not until the days determined by me will be fulfilled. If this wasn't the case, I would take you back to my garden because of my mercy and because of the offering that you have given recently and made in my name. Adam got glad when he heard these words from God. Adam and Ua bowed before God in front of the altar, and later they returned to the cave of treasures. And this happened at the end of the 20th day during their fasting. And after the 80th day when Adam and Ua had to leave the Garden of Eden, Adam and Ua prayed through the whole night till morning. And after that, they came out from the cave. Because of the offering that they made for God and because he accepted it, Adam said to Ua with a joyful heart, Let's do it three times a week during all the days of our lives. On the fourth day, in the day of preparation, and in the day of resting. After Adam and Ua agreed on this, God liked their thoughts and their decision. And so God's word came to Adam and said, Adam, you determine the days in advance which will bring me suffering when I incarnate. Because they are the fourth day and the day of preparation. Regarding the first day, I created everything in this day and I raised the heavens. And again through my resurrection in this day, I will create joy and will elevate highly those who believe in me. O oh, Adam, make offerings during all days of your life. Afterward, God said this. He withdrew his word from Adam, and Adam continued to bring offerings and sacrifices according to how God had taught them. Chapter 64. And then Satan, who hates everything what is good, turned envious because of Adam's offering and sacrifices, and because he received blessings from God. He hurried up and took a sharp stone of iron and appeared before Adam in the form of a man. Adam was making offerings at the altar and had started to pray to God with uplifted hands. And then Satan pierced Adam with this sharp stone in his right side of the body, 
from where ran out blood mixed with water. Adam fell down to the ground and looked like a dead man, and then Satan ran away. Then Ua came to Adam and placed his body under the altar. She stood there in front of it and cried for him, while from Adam's right side of the bloody of his body flew out a spurt of blood over his offering. But God saw Adam's death, and he sent his word. He made Adam alive and said to him, Proceed with your offering, Adam, because it is truly very valuable. God added and said to Adam, This will also happen to me when I come to earth. I will be pierced, and from my side of the body will run out blood mixed with water. It will drip down on my body, which will be the true sacrifice, and which will be brought to an altar as absolute offering. And God ordered Adam to finish his offering, and when he was done, he bowed before God and glorified him for the signs that he gave him. Because God revealed to him the mystery of the sharp iron stone, so he may have something to defend himself with when he will be attacked. God healed Adam in one day, which was the last day of the seven weeks, and this was on the fiftieth day. Adam and Ua went back to their cave of treasures as usual, and in this day had passed 140 days after Adam and Ua had been expelled from the Garden of Eden. Uh, I need need to make um, a comment here. For those of you that are familiar with Daniel's timeline, you you know that um, it's broken into 50 jubilees. And that with the 50th Jubilee, according to the timeline, that this is when um, when rest will come to those that are of his people. And that judgment also will ensue that the harvest, which some have speculated will occur on the Feast of Trumpets, um, September 23rd, 2017. Whether there's any truth to this or not, uh, it's my opinion. Because this day, September 23rd, 2017, is encoded in the, the Revelation chapter 12, the virgin clothed with the sun, the moon beneath her feet, child within her womb, and the crown of 12 stars. That um, and that this is also when the fiftieth jubilee and the end of the um, end of Daniel's timeline is that you know who knows, but it's my opinion that this particular day will be significant um, for the people. Uh, and and for the wise virgins, how it plays out, you know, we're not that far off. We'll see, um, but I do believe it will be significant in one way or the other. And so it seems interesting to me how it, the last day of the seven weeks, which reminded me of the the end of Daniel's timeline and how and if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about type in YouTube the search Daniel's timeline it's a video series done by Dewey Bruton where he breaks down and uh, unlocks the riddle of Daniel's timeline and he ties it together with uh, you know our being the fig tree generation and the connections to the blooming of the fig tree which was the restoration of the nation of Israel back in 1948 that all of these things are are significant to where we are 
uh, be at, in being at the end of days. In my opinion. All right, continuing. Um, Adam and Noah went back to their cave of treasures as usual, and this day had passed 140 days after Adam and Noah had been expelled from the Garden of Eden. And during this night, both Adam and Noah prayed to God. In the morning, they came out from the cave and walked towards the west to the place where the wheat was and where, and where they used to relax. But then it came a lot. Then came a lot of animals which surrounded Adam and Nua. This was Satan's making or Satan's doing uh, because of his malice to go to war against Adam and his match or bride, Eve. Chapter 65. Satan, who hates everything that good is, transformed to an angel together with two other angels of his army, so they would look like the three angels who had brought who brought before Adam the gold, the incense, and the myrrh. They passed Adam and Ua while they were under the tree, relaxing, and greeted them with kind, empty words full of lies. And when Adam and Ua saw the angels, appealing expression, and when they heard their eloquent speech, Adam rose upright and welcomed them to stay. Adam's heart was glad because he thought that the angels were the same angels who brought them before the gold, the incense, and the myrrh. Because back then when the angels came to Adam for the first time, they brought with them peace and joy and good things. Now Adam thought that the angels came for the second time to give them other things which would make Adam happy. He didn't know that this was Satan in disguise, so he welcomed the angels gladly and with hosp- hospitality. And then Satan, the tallest of the angels, said, Rejoice, Adam. See, God sends us to tell you something. Adam replied, What is it? Satan said. It's something simple, but it is God's words. Will you accept it, and will you do what we tell you? If you don't accept it, we will go back to God, and we will tell him that you don't want to accept his word. Satan said again to Adam, Don't be scared and do not tremble. Don't you recognize us? Adam said, I don't know you. And then Satan said to Adam, I'm the angel who brought you the gold and put it in the cave. The other angel brought you the incense, and the third brought you the myrrh. It happened when you were on the top of the mountain from which you were taken back to the cave. But this time God didn't send the other angels, those who brought you back from the mountain, because he said to us, You are enough. And when Adam heard these words, he believed and said, Do speak of God's word, so I may accept it. But Satan said to Adam, Swear and promise that you will accept it. I don't know how to swear and how to promise, replied Adam. But Satan said to him, Stretch out your hand and put it in my hand. And Adam did what he was told. Then Satan said to him, Now say, As it is true that God is alive, as he is intelligent and can speak, he who raises heavens and spaces, who settled a dry land above the waters, and who created me from the four elements and from earthly dust, so I will not break my promises, neither will I reject my words. And Adam made this way his oath. Then Satan said to Adam, See, just a little time had passed since you left the Garden of Eden, and you don't know evil or its defects. But God tells you to take Ua, who came from you, to copulate with her so she may give birth to your children. This will make you a real man. She will endow you with pleasure and consolation, and she will chase away from you unhappiness and 
and sadness. This is not difficult and this is not shameful. It is something that would make you will not make will make you dishonored. Chapter 66 When Adam heard these words from Satan, he was hurt very much because of this oath that he made and because he promised to keep his word. So he said, Do you want me to fornicate and to commit adultery with my body and my bone? Shall I sin against myself so God would destroy me and erase me from the face of the earth? Because when I ate in the beginning from the tree, God expelled me from the Garden of Eden and placed me in this unknown land and deprived me from the bright substance and brought me upon death. And if I do this now, he will take my life and will send me to hell where he will torment me for a long time. God did not tell you to tell me these words. You are not God's angels, and God did not send you. You are devils who came to me disguised as angels. Go away from me, you cursed by God. And these devils ran away from Adam, and Adam and Uah walked back to the cave of treasures and went inside. And then Adam said to Uah, if you have seen what I did, don't tell it to anybody because I sinned before God when I made the oath in his great name and put my hand in Satan's hand. Ua kept silent as Adam had told her. And Adam stretched his hands towards God and begged him with tears in his eyes to forgive him for what had happened. He prayed during 40 days and 40 nights. He didn't eat or drink till he fell down to the ground, exhausted of hunger and thirst. And then God sent his word and said to Adam, O oh Adam, why did you swear in my name and why did you make again a pact with Satan? Adam cried and replied, O oh God, forgive me because I didn't do it consciously when I believed that these were God's angels. God forgave Adam and said to him, be careful of Satan. And God withdrew his word from Adam. And after that, Adam found consolation in his heart. He and Ua came out from the cave and started to prepare food for their bodies. But from this day, Adam struggled within himself regarding his new, new, newly lust for Ua. He was afraid that if he touched Ua, God would be angry with him. Adam and Ua went to the river and sat down at the coast in a way like people used to do when they were seeking fun. But Satan was envious and continued to forge plans on how to destroy them. Chapter 67 and then Satan and tether, ten other angels of his army disguised themselves as young girls and with not comparable beauty and elegance in the whole world. They came out of the river water in Adam and Ua's presence and said to each other, Let's go to see the faces of Adam and Ua who are humans. Look how they are beautiful and different from our own faces. And the girls approached Adam and Ua and greeted them. The girls stood there and admired them. Adam and Ua also looked at them and were amazed over their beauty. And they said to the girls, Is there another world under ours in which live such beautiful creatures? And the young girls said to Adam and Ua, Yes, we are multiple creations. And Adam asked them, But how do you breed? The girls replied, We have men who copulate with us and we give birth to their children. When they grow up, they copulate with others and also gave birth to their children. And this way we multiply. If you don't believe us, Adam, we will show you how we can multiply with you. Then the girls shouted across the river and called their many men with who they were not married. And they called upon their children who also came out of the river. And every man went with their many women and their children 
and who they were not marrying. But when Adam and Ua saw them, they became speechless and were astonished. Then the disguised girl said to Adam and Ua, See, here are our men and our children. Copulate with Ua, or come to copulate with us and our men, so you may multiply together. You will have a holy mystery with us, as we always have it when the summer arrives, during the sunrise. This was Satan's plot in order to deceive Adam. Besides that, Satan thought, from the beginning God ordered Adam regarding the tree. Don't eat from it, otherwise you will die a death. But Adam ate, and despite this, God didn't destroy him. He only condemned him to death, to torment him and give him probations, till the day he will leave his body. But now, if I succeed to deceive him and make him copulate with Ua, or make him to copulate with other women when he will participate in our orgies, then God will destroy him for sure. That's why Satan made this vision before Adam and Ua, because he wanted to kill and destroy them, to erase them from the face of the earth, so that only Satan's descendants would remain. So the fire of sin came upon Adam, and he was close to committing this sin. But he held back because he feared that if he followed Satan's advice, God would truly destroy him. Afterwards, Adam and Ua restrained themselves and prayed to God. Satan and his army sank into the water before Adam and Ua's eyes to show them that they are returning to their own dwelling place. Adam and Ua went back to the cave of treasures at noon as usual. During this night, both of them prayed to God. Adam remained praying longer, but he didn't know how to pray because he thought about Ua regarding his copulation with her. And so Adam continued praying until morning. And in the morning, Adam said to Ua, let's go to claim the mountain and go to the place where we receive the gold and let's ask for advice from God regarding this case. Ua asked, what case, Adam? He replied, to ask God about knowledge regarding my marriage to you, because I will not multiply with you without his permission. And so he might not destroy me and you, because these odd creatures kindled the fire in my heart when they showed us their sinful personifications. And Ua said to Adam, Why go to the mountain? Let's stay in our cave and pray to God here so he can tell us if this intention is good or not good. And then Adam started to pray and said, Oh God, you know that we committed a sin against you. And from the moment when we broke your commandment, you deprived us of our birth substance, of our previous bodies, and our bodies became like those of the animals, which need food and drink and have bodily desire. O oh God, order us not to subdue to our desire without your permission so you might not destroy us, because if you don't give us permission regarding this thing, we will fail in this way, follow Satan's advice, and then you will destroy us. And if you won't destroy us, then take our souls so we can get rid of this carnal desire. And if you don't give us commandment, then separate Ua from me and me from her and place us far away from each other. But again, O oh God, if you separate us, the devils will deceive us through visions and will destroy our hearts and will des desecrate our thoughts for each other. And Adam ended his praying. Chapter 68. I uh, probably won't be able to read through this. 
So I'm just going to read a little bit, and then we'll end this. Then God considered Adam's word to be true, that he should wait for God's command. Actually, I'm going to just stop it here. We'll pick up. I for sure can finish this text uh, with maybe a 15-minute segment in the next show. So we'll finish this up next week, and then I'll do um, the remainder of the show on some other teaching. So we'll get back into some other series and some other focuses. If you have anything that you are interested in me doing a show upon, or you want me to bring some information to review, um, send me your inquiries. Email me, uh, Zen Garcia on Facebook, or hit me up at zengarcia.com. Let me know what you, you know you want me to cover, and I'll put together a few shows for you along those lines. God bless all. Good night.